everyone and welcome back to McKegg's Movie Mayhem in association with WBBJ7 Eyewitness News. I'm your host Eli McKegg and today I'm going to be doing the movie review for The Strangers Chapter 1. Why are you doing this to us? Because you're here. Now, The Strangers Chapter 1 is the newest installment to The Strangers franchise, the newest horror film from Lionsgate, and it's also the first installment of a trilogy that this new era of The Strangers is going to be doing. I didn't realize it was the first installment of a trilogy, even though it's called Chapter 1. I recently, as the movie was wrapping up and ending, I like as the credits were rolling, I did some research on it and it said, hey, we're doing, they're doing two more chapters. They were filming two other movies concurrently with this one. So yeah, we're gonna get two more movies of The Strangers Chapter One. And I have to say, not looking forward to them because if anything, if this movie is to sort of be a template of what the next sort of films are gonna be like, it's not gonna be good because this is not a good movie. This is not a good horror film at all. This is the best way I can say it because The Strangers is a weird franchise to look at because the first film that came out all the way in the early 2000s was a hit. Everyone really enjoyed it. Everyone loved it. It was a success because the way that film was made and the way the horror and everything about that film, it felt real. A lot of the reason why that movie was scary was because of how real it felt. This movie is not that. There were a lot of moments in the film where I was just thinking to myself, realistically, this would not be happening. This little instance of the film would not be happening. Like, for instance, I know this is a horror trope, but there were moments where the lead female would be like it's in the trailer she was taking a shower and then the leader of the strangers is just standing there and he's just hovering and then she steps back she turns around and he's gone he just magically disappeared in real life that wouldn't happen and again the thing about the original strangers was a lot of it felt real like a lot of it felt like what is happening in the film could be happening in real life and a moment like that and other moments of just the the strangers appearing and then disappearing like that, not real at all. There's no way they can easily just disappear. And I think that was one of the logic things. And I know it's movie logic and sometimes movie logic, you just got to take it at face value. But then there are sometimes like this one where it's just the movie logic can only go so far. Another example for me is that there is a moment where... They're in, again, they're in a cabin out in the middle of the woods. And just, they, they're leaving all the doors unlocked. And I don't know about you, but if I'm in a cabin in the middle of the woods, all those doors are getting locked. I'm not keeping those doors unlocked at all. They are locked and making sure no one is going to be coming to get me at all. And it's just moments like that where I just think that the movie and this franchise is losing some of the realness that it had. And I think that a lot of the horror wasn't working. There was, I want to say, legitimately one moment where I got jump scared. And that's it. The rest of the moment, even when it's really tense, I'm not feeling tense. I'm not feeling the urgency that the horror is trying to give. I think that this movie is trying to do too much. I think this movie is trying to create something, create the magic from the first, from the original Strangers, and it's just not there. The idea of home invasion is terrifying, and I think this film goes a little too over the top with it, because there are some moments where, how to best describe it without giving spoilers, there are just a lot of moments that feel a little action heavy, where they're very much, hey, we're just going to have like a mini action set piece here. And I just think it doesn't work. And I think there are other moments with the lead actors that like they're crawling around in a space under the house to try to get away. And I'm just thinking to myself, wow, this, this is ingenuitive, but I don't know how the strangers aren't noticing when they're walking around and whispering. And I'm just thinking, 
I think if I was one of the strangers, I would have been able to hear even the slightest whisper. And I think that's really what takes it away. Like the horror, I was bored throughout the film. I was not entertained at all by this film. I, I just thought it was a boring horror film that was trying so hard to replicate the magic of the very first Strangers film. And I just, I don't think it landed. I don't think the cast did that great of a job. I think they were okay. I think Madeline Petch, who plays the lead female Maya, I think she did okay, but I don't think her performance is gonna be looked at as, oh man, that was a really great performance in a horror film. No, it was an okay performance at best because some of this film falls into tropes for these characters, like tropes that are easy to avoid. And it's just, because they go into this this small town with a population of 400 and they're like hey we're gonna go to a diner hey can you get my girlfriend madeline petch can you get her a vegetarian burger and everyone in the diner is like really vegetarian okay and i understand there are some towns that are legitimately like that but it's just when you're watching a movie watching seeing that interaction is so much of a trope like it's a trope that is easily avoidable and it just doesn't feel natural when it's something like that. When, especially when you look at moments in other films when they do the exact same trope and it's just, it's just a boring trope. And another, here's another thing for me. There are some people that were cast in the film that play just cameo-esque roles that are really popular horror actors. And I'm just thinking, why were you cast in this film if you're not going to do anything? Example, Richard Brake. He is in this film. He has been in multiple different horror films. I best know him as Joe Chill from Batman Begins. And he's in this film. He is in the diner scene and he's wearing a police uniform, like a sheriff department uniform. And he's literally only in the diner scene. And... If you're casting Richard Brake, who has been in horror films, he was in Barbarian, and he did a really great job in Barbarian. If you're going to cast him in one of your horror films, you need to cast him in a substantial role. And he's just here for a scene, and we never see him again. I, I feel like some of these actors like that are just, that could do really great are wasted as just, cameos in the background unless they're going to be playing bigger parts in chapter two and chapter three i understand you want to lay the groundwork for chapter one but it's just with how substantial some of these actors are i feel like you're wasting them you could give them more to do but i just think that this movie was wasted potential i think it could have been a, a lot better and i really do think that I, I don't recommend this movie. If you're going to watch a movie this weekend, I don't recommend this. This is not the best horror film that has come out this year. Um, this isn't even the best horror film that's come out in the past two years. And I understand Chapter 2 is coming out, and I am not looking forward to it. I'm most likely going to have to review it, and I'm just not looking forward to that. But overall, I, again, I don't recommend this film. Overall, I give this film a 1.5 out of 5 stars a three out of ten next week i'm putting up another poll for you all to choose between an action film and an animated family film so you can choose the action film furiosa a mad max saga or you can choose the animated family film the garfield movie but until then i've been eli mckeg with wbbj7 eyewitness news and i hope you all remember to watch movies <laughs>